now the season's just around the corner or it's already begun in some states. And some of you are thinking about an all day set. You're gonna pack everything out, you're gonna fill up your backpack with goodies, snacks, something to drink, and you're gonna sit all day. You're gonna go Mr. Hardcore or Mrs. Hardcore. You wanna go in there and hit it hard all day and you're gonna put your time in because more time equals more deer, right? Well, most of the time the answer is wrong. There's a smart way to hunt. There's a more effective way to hunt. I find there are some really hardcore hunters out there. They're driving great distances, they're road warriors, they're staying up all night, but it doesn't have to be that difficult. There's another way to look at it where you're approaching the season and your sits as more of a tactician. You're going in when the time is right and you expect to kill something, your target buck, and you go in and you go after it and you wait until that specific time. So a lot of times less is more when it comes to hunting. I'm looking at three really good times to take an all day sit. In the early seasons, not one of them. Because if it's a good morning stand, meaning you're back by a bedding area, you're waiting for deer to come back. For one, in the early season, he might already be there. Two, once he's in his bedding area, he's not moving much. And then if it's an afternoon set, that means it's near food. So if you're near that food source, you're trying to get in in the morning, that deer might already be there, and you just buggered up your set for the afternoon. You go into the morning on a food source or near a food source, there's a lot of deer around, you don't know where they're at, you go in there, you spook them. Now they're not going to be in that food source that afternoon, evening, and they're certainly not gonna be in the bedding area that was relating to it. So sitting all day in the early season is most of the time a really losing proposition. There's a lot of great stands out there, but most of them are more afternoon, evening, or morning because morning relates more to bedding, afternoon relates more to food sources. So just being hardcore and sitting in the stand neck all day doesn't necessarily accomplish much, but there's some really good times to sit all day. And I wanna point out the first one. It's more of a location than a time thing. If I'm hunting public land, a lot of times I wanna hunt some type of acorn flat in the early season. May wanna hit a cruising funnel during the rut. All day sits, public land, a lot of times you're going in a long ways. It's hard to differentiate between their bedding exactly here, their feeding here, but especially getting those acorn flats in the early season. Try getting in there right at daybreak. You can see when you're going in, you're not making a lot of noise. You're not getting in there so early that you're spooking deer that are on that flat, they're already going to their beds. You get in there gray light, light, sit down, and then just wait all day. If that buck is nearby, and you have a really good acorn flat, it's very defined. I can think of a really good, I always think of this uh, white oak acorn flat on a southwest facing slope in public land and public land in Ohio. It's about an hour and 15 minute walk from the truck. And in the early season, there's just rubs and scrapes everywhere, meaning there's rubs and scrapes there middle end of September, let alone early October during the bow season opener. So really cool spot to sit early season and that's the type of place where it's very defined. It's only a few acres and bedding's either up high, it's down low in the hemlock flat near water. It's over on the corner in a brushy draw, but you can sneak in there and sit all day. Not a bad tactic when you're on public land. You're going in, you're gonna get comfortable, sit all day. Now second, I'm really waiting until the rut. And it's not the pre-rut because during the pre-rut, those bucks are still focusing on food in the afternoon, evening, but they're spending a lot of time in their morning hours around their bedding areas. So I wanna get in on the side of a bedding area, wait for the deer to come back to me, and that's my bread and butter set. Getting in there, waiting for those bucks to come back to me, and they're very, very active. They're not gonna leave from that location. When I sit all day on private land, I wanna sit in that perfect X of transition where there's food over here, bedding over here, and it's not slanted just to food, it's not slanting towards just bedding. And especially on private land, if I have a really nice active scrape, or I have a really good water hole like this behind me, this water hole can be money for an all day set. We have a stand right over here, and we have a stand here, depending on winds, access, time of day, this is more of a, a morning, uh, location where you get in post daybreak or we can get there in the evening as long as we're, we're sensible in this way. This is a more early morning sit where we come in from the back, get into the stand and get out this way. But during the pre-rut, 
This is one of those very few that feature an X pattern of movement where deer might be here all day, but I can't get into that stand until post daybreak. And I would say out of all of our stands for an all day set, we only have maybe 15% of our stands, 10% of our stands that are for an all day set because they don't feature that X of movement where we can expect good buck movement all day. But boy, when you get into the rut, the peak of the rut, and you really have to watch those rut timing forecasts. I can guarantee around here, Southwest Wisconsin, Southeast Minnesota, we're seeing a huge drop off in cruising buck activity once we get into the 12th, 13th, 14th of November. It just starts to shut down. It's not to say there's not breeding going at at night, but there's been a lot of hunters in the woods. Peak breeding to me is more 5th, 6th, 7th in November around here, and you see that decline. See, a lot of these states don't figure in the second rut. So you get this big bump of rutting activity in early November, then you get another decent bump in December, and then a tiny bump in January, and they'll just take that entire average. And what it does is it takes that peak rut of the third, the fourth, fifth, sixth, seventh, eighth, pushes it back to the 15th of November, 12th of November, when really if you separate out those three ruts, the primary, the secondary, and even that third rut, then they each have a pretty precise window a little bit earlier than that forecast, especially when it relates to that primary rut. When you get into that peak rut time, that's when bucks really start to move. It's not like the pre-rut where they're going into their little bedding area. They might put on three miles, but they didn't leave 10 acres. That's why I want to be sitting on the side of that 10 acres, and you're going to have a really good opportunity. But when it comes to sitting all day, I might sit all day in a, in a time like that. But I'm going to leave that morning stand and I'm going to go to the afternoon stand that relates to food, maybe a water hole, and then maybe have that perfect exit movement. But again, there's not a lot of those out in the woods. And so you look at that opportunity on public land where maybe I'm going in sitting all day on a nice acorn flat. Maybe I'm getting in there a little bit more during daylight. I can see, I can stalk to my stand location, getting to that spot, and then I'm going to sit till dark. And then you look at the peak rut, big different than the pre-rut, where the pre-rut, again, they're spending a lot of times in their bedding area all morning long, and they're not leaving that. I'm not gonna sit there all day because if the closer it gets to dark, those bucks are leaving going to food. I have less of a chance of seeing deer the closer it gets to dark in that situation, where if I move and go to an afternoon stand, I have more of a chance to see bucks the closer it gets to dark, and that's where I wanna be. The peak rut is an awesome time to find a great stand that relates to food and bedding movement, maybe a water hole in between, and then of course, opening day of gun season. I love to get in early, sit all day, let neighbors push deer to me, let neighbors move around, and then I'm sitting till dark. But what I find is, is after that first day, a lot of times I'm not going out in the morning that second day because those deer have been pushed around, those bucks get to where they want to hole up, and they're already sitting tight before it gets daybreak. So if you go in there, maybe you have that opportunity where you can go in through open hardwoods, you know there's no deer around, it's well away from food, you get into a stand location, you're not gonna see deer for an hour or two on that second morning, but the conditions have to be perfect to make sure that you're not spooking deer going in. But certainly opening day of gun season, maybe that second day. And then I'll take some morning sits sometimes when it gets later into early December for that second rut. Sometimes you have that same X of movement by a certain stand during the December rut, that second rut that you can take. It features a big X. But what I find is during that second rut, although they might be moving all day, they're really slanting a lot of their activity to those morning hours or afternoon hours. And when it comes to afternoon hours, so many people focus on the afternoon. But what I find is those deer move and studies show too, those mature bucks are moving about a third as much in the afternoon hours of daylight than they are in the morning. So maybe you're thinking about this early season, you're thinking about loading up your backpack, going and sitting out all day. Think about scoring your hunt. I talk about this in my 2018 All Weather Whitetail book where we talk about scoring your hunt, meaning you look at early season, you have a score of a morning and you have a score in the afternoon. Look at it as 10 out of 10 both mornings, you have a possible 20 for the day. If you're sitting in a great morning stand, meaning it's closer to food, it's in a transition, that's a horrible afternoon set. So you might have had a 10 out of 10 morning set, that afternoon turns into a one or a two. So very low, low score. Think about during the peak rut, you get a chance of three scores, middle of the day, morning and afternoon. 
you want to sit in that perfect X and sit all day, go ahead and do so. But a lot of times I'm sitting, even at that time, I might sit out in the woods all day, but I'm taking a seat that captures that morning movement all the way up until about one o'clock. And then I'm flipping over to a stand that more relates to food, not necessarily on the food source, but close enough to where I could catch a mature buck that might be cruising along that food source three, three hours before dark, or he might be visiting that food source right at dark. And that's why I like moving. That's why I rarely do you have that perfect stand. So if you're planning on going out and sitting all day, opening day, early season, think about being a little bit smarter hunter and think about, I might wanna go hunt here in the morning because it relates to bedding or a long acorn movement back to bedding. And then maybe I wanna go sit here in the afternoon because it relates to food. Look at the score of each set. Try to think of it that way. That helps me think of it. Just, I'm a numbers guy. And uh, bottom line is try to maximize every sit that you have. Don't look at it like someone's, I spend more time in the woods, it's gonna make me more successful. Instead, look at it, where should I be in the morning and why? Where should I be in the afternoon and why? And often you'll find that's a completely different stand location and you can apply that just about to the entire hunting season. You know, what a year it's been. I really appreciate all of your support. Uh, thank you so much. Um, I wanted to point out, we still have our Earthway spreaders. We're always gonna have those uh, for sale on Pure Wildlife Blends, WHS. Great Christmas presents. Um, again, we're scheduling for clients right now. It seems early, but the season goes by early. Typically, between the four or five of us will go to uh, properties, uh, five including Wes, and then uh, Joe, Kevin, Dylan, myself, Typically by the end of December, we're all booked up. I have about 300 properties across the country. So now is the time to book. Check out info at whitetailhabitatsolutions.com. Jesse will help you book your time. Also our web classes. This is a really big time where people are starting to purchase those web classes to help them with hills and thermals, hunting the rut, and then especially towards the end of December, we're getting into our how to design your whitetail property, a great alternative to actually having one of us out to the property. Boots on the ground are always better. Check out digital land management, which is something new we're working on. We'll continue to work on that. And, uh, and of course, we really appreciate all your support. We have more hats, more t-shirts on the site. Uh, the books are always there and wanna thank you. Thanks for checking us out and uh, appreciate you.